Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be talking about Venus flytrap dormancy, why it is important to them, and what actually happens to the plants during their rest. So stick around. Before we get started, if you're new to this channel, this channel is dedicated to the care and cultivation of carnivorous plants, just like our little Venus flytrap over here. So if you think that that is something that will interest you, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any of our weekly videos and also click on the notification button so that YouTube actually lets you know when we make the video. So let's start talking about Venus flytrap dormancies. So this topic that we're talking about today actually comes from one of our subscribers, YT Boy the One, and he asked us to talk a little bit more about Venus flytrap dormancy and what actually happens to the plants in winter. So I went outside and obviously got our little Venus flytrap here that is almost dormant. It's the last month of autumn. We have like one week and then it's the first month of spring. I mean, the first month of winter. And then it'll be in full dormancy. So we have a dormant Venus flytrap here. And the reason why I brought it out is to actually show you guys how the plant looks during dormancy. So let me just change the camera and show you guys. So this is our Venus flytrap. You can tell that it is dormant because it has small traps. There are lots of dead traps and the dead traps are bigger than the current traps. That's a big way to tell that they're dormant. But the next biggest way to tell that they're dormant is that it is winter. So obviously, if you don't know if your Venus flytrap is dormant or not, just think to yourself, okay, is it spring, summer, winter, autumn? If it's autumn or winter, you know it's going dormant or it is dormant. So obviously here in Australia, it is dormant sea time for these guys because it is winter now, as I've said like 20 times. But you can also see the plant looks very tired. It looks like it's making small traps. There's developing traps right there in the middle. You see all the open traps that are in the middle, the newest ones, are much smaller than some of these older, bigger traps and much smaller than the old dead traps that you can see there at the back. The question that we're answering today is what happens to the plants and why do they go dormant? So what actually happens is that every single winter time, it obviously it gets cold and the photo period, which is a small definition over here, the photo period decreases. So what do I mean by this? So when the photo period decreases, essentially what happens is that there is less light from the sun. That doesn't mean that the sun shuts a blind and then it just doesn't have any more light coming towards the earth. It simply means that because it is winter time and the globe has turned, there is less light coming to that area of the globe simply because of the way that the earth spins. Essentially, there is less sunlight in winter than summer. So in summertime, you may have something like 12 hours or you know 18 hours of sunlight a day, but in winter time, you get about eight hours of sunlight a day. So here in Australia where I'm staying, the sun rises at about six o'clock and it sets back at around five or so. So that's about 11 hours of sunlight. I'm pretty sure that the sun probably rises at around seven and can even set a little bit earlier in the days when it gets like right in the middle of winter time around the June solstice. Secondly, what happens is that when winter comes around, it obviously it gets cold, right? If you're staying in a temperate environment, for example, if you're staying in, um, in America, in a temperate region, like not Florida, because that's basically tropical all the time. If you're staying in like Europe, the UK, here in Australia is also temperate, except if you go very far north, South Africa, places like this, these are temperate regions. And we obviously have very defined summer and winter periods and when winter comes around it's cold and there is less sunlight so just like the trees the venus flytrap goes to sleep the trees shed all their leaves they make much less growth and the reason for this with the venus flytrap is that there is less light and there is lower temperatures so there's less light which means that there is less energy available and it is colder and what the cold means is that there's less insects so because there's less insects they're not going to make their traps, these traps anymore, because what's the point? You're going to make a trap, waste all that energy to make such a nice, beautiful, big trap to catch nothing. You know, it's a waste of energy. When winter time comes around, 
they go to sleep just like trees do. They don't make any more new and big leaves because there's less sunlight, there's less energy coming in and there's no insects to catch because it's winter. Another thing is, many people say that you don't actually have to give a Venus flytrap their dormancy and I always recommend to everyone, give your Venus flytrap dormancy because that's what they get in the wild. They wouldn't have adapted to go dormant if there wasn't a reason for them to go dormant, you know? If you make lots of big beautiful traps in the springtime and the summertime when there's tons and tons of bugs and a lot of sunlight, they're going to be catching a lot of insects and obviously they'll be getting a lot of energy from it. Now, why would I waste my energy making these nice big traps in wintertime where there's less sunlight and there's less insects? It's just a simple return on investment, I guess. Now, I've spoken a lot about what makes them go dormant and the reason why you should let them go dormant, but I haven't really spoken about what actually happens to the plant when they go dormant. So when the autumn time comes around, there is slowly less and less light, the photoperiod decreases, and obviously the temperatures get cooler too. So the plant picks up in this. It obviously picks up in this by using their leaves. All their tiny little leaves, what you see as a trap, is actually a leaf. It's a modified leaf. So those traps and the petioles, their petioles also pick up on the decreased amount of light just like the leaves on a tree do. The plant sees that there's less light and they're like, okay, there's less light coming in and the plant can, the plant can obviously feel that it's getting colder. You know, it, it's a plant, it's alive. These cells have receptors that feel that there's colder temperatures coming in and the chloroplasts realize that there is less sunlight coming in and these trigger different reactions within the cell and cause them to start slowing down their growth. This is just a natural process that many plants that go dormant actually do. Just like a bear would in the wild, they feel, oh, it's getting nice and cold, there's obviously less sunlight, there's going to be less food around, let me go and hibernate, and come springtime when there's abundance of food, I will wake back up and continue eating. It's a very similar concept. So the plant realizes there's less sunlight, and it realizes that it's much colder. So what happens is that, naturally, the cells just start growing much slower, they produce growth at a much slower rate. They just simply slow down and make less. So that is the reason why you actually see the traps get smaller and smaller. And in some cases, they just stop because the plant completely goes to a halt. And then during the winter time, they store all of their energy that they have accumulated throughout the spring and summer. Instead of putting that energy towards growing, they store that all in their rhizome underneath the ground. Venus flytraps and Saracenias too, they have a white, fleshy material under the surface of the soil, and that is called the rhizome, and that is where they store all of their energy. So in the winter time, they store all their energy there, and they just rest. They simply just go to sleep for the winter months, and then when spring comes around, there is higher temperatures, there is more sunlight. They pick up on this through all the receptors in their leaves, and then they realize, okay, it's, it's springtime, let's start making new growth. There is a signal that's sent throughout all of the cells in the plant and the plant starts growing more and more and more and obviously makes the super big traps and healthy growth that we're used to when springtime comes around. Now this is very similar to a bear. When it starts getting warm in the springtime, the bear wakes up. Its body feels the warmer temperatures and obviously its eyes will see that there's more sunlight and the bear is like, okay, it's time to wake up to go catch some food. Same with trees. The trees, they feel the warmer temperatures, their bark and everything, they can feel the warmer temperatures and they sense that there's more sunlight. They make new leaves and they start flowering and this is just part of the natural cycle. I'm not sure if it's called the circadian cycle for plants, but it is the circadian cycle for, for animals, for mammals. But I think it might have a different name for plants. It's just a natural cycle that living organisms go through. Like humans, we feel tired at night, we go to sleep, we wake up when the sun is up because we are diurnal. Some animals that are nocturnal, they're sleepy during the day and they're awake at night. And the reason for this is simply because those animals, they want their food at night. And humans, for example, we would be able to get our food during the day because our eyes have adapted to the light and nocturnal animals have their eyes adapted to the dark. So it's simply that the plants have just adapted to colder temperatures. They have adapted to less sunlight and we shouldn't really go around and start messing that up by not giving the Venus flytraps a lot of dormancy, 
even though you probably can not get in dormancy, I still really don't recommend you skip on that dormancy if you can help it. Do not take what I'm saying as the gospel truth. It is just my observations and reasoning as to why the Venus flytrap needs their dormancy because no one can really explain why they need their dormancy. So obviously the facts that I've given you today, such as they do go dormant, they do store their energy underground, come springtime they grow back, that stuff is all true. But we're also not sure why they need their dormancy. So that is the only thing that I can say that is uncertain, but the rest is all true. They go to sleep in winter, they store their energy, their, their growth rate slows down. They're obviously, the only way that they can sense the changes in the environment is with the receptors in their cells. So that's obviously true too. But we still don't know the exact reason why they need it. But obviously they do. They need it because where they're from, they live in an environment that obviously gives this outcome in the plants. Also, if you don't give your Venus flytrap a dormancy, which is induced by a decrease in temperature and a decrease in sunlight, how will the Venus flytrap know when to flower? Because they flower in spring, just like many trees do. When they sense the warmer temperatures and they sense the increased amount of sunlight, they know that it's springtime and they know that this is the best time for them to flower. Because over many millions of years, they've developed these techniques to actually flower during spring because that's when there is the most amount of pollinators. So if you don't give your Venus flytrap dormancy, how would it know when to flower? It is obviously proof right there that they need their dormancies, but as I've said again, we aren't 100% sure why they need their dormancy. But all we do know is that if they don't get their dormancy, they don't come back in springtime very, very strong and they grow much better in springtime. And they won't know really when to flower unless you have some grow lights on them and you change the amount of light that you give them between spring and summer. So, as I've said, this is quite a big debate for many Venus flytrap growers. Some say that they don't need a dormancy, some people say that they do. As I've said, rather give them something that they need, and that we know that they need, and that they've actually evolved to have over many million years, rather than just not giving it to them at all. It's obviously a very natural cycle that many living organisms, like bears, humans and trees, all use as part of just living. So the takeaway from this is that it is a debate between whether the Venus flytraps need a dormancy or not. And also when a Venus flytrap goes dormant, it senses the decreased temperature, the decrease in light, stores all its energy underground in the rhizome, and come spring and summertime, the plant just starts growing back from all the energy that it has stored in the rhizome. Now that's the dormancy of a Venus flytrap put very simply and talking about the reasons why they may go dormant and other reasons why many people say they don't need dormancy. Now, there are also other big scientific things that you could go into which you really need like a lot of background information on plants and the environment to really understand it in depth. Even I get bored when I read research papers and I'm obviously, I'm obviously a person who has finished their degree in science and you know, reading those papers is really, really boring. So if you find a little bit of interest in this, if you find it interesting at all, please remember to leave a like. And if you want to see some of our updates on our plants that we have, outside please remember to subscribe to the channel because we make a video every single week and i hope that you will enjoy those videos so thank you guys that was our talk on how the venus flat traps realize that they need to go dormant what happens while they're dormant and a discussion between whether they should or shouldn't go dormant and comparing that discussion to other living animals so i'll see you guys in the next one